The Biden administration has repeatedly said it wants competition, not conflict, with China. It's in that spirit that Secretary of State Antony Blinken embarked on a three-day trip there, his second visit in the last year. Blinken met with his Chinese counterpart for more than five hours on Friday. He also met with President Xi Jinping. Trade and national security were among the topics of discussion. And for analysis, we're joined now by CBS News national security contributor Sam Vinograd. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the first thing I want to ask is, what are the biggest takeaways from the secretary's trip? Well, Blinken's visit is the latest in a series of high-level engagements between the United States and China, really focused on deepening communication between the two countries. While in China, Blinken focused on people-to-people -people exchanges, cooperation and counter-narcotics and artificial intelligence, as well as tough issues like Taiwan, Chinese human rights abuses, and more. But the context for this trip is really critical. The United States has expressed deep concerns about Chinese economic policies, like flooding markets with cheap goods because of oversupply domestically. The U.S. government is also very, very concerned about Chinese dual-use items being used on the battlefield by Russia against Ukraine. And while in China, Secretary of State Blinken did indicate his assessment that China is interfering in the U.S. 2024 election cycle. But it's not just rhetoric. There are actual punitive measures being adopted. President Biden this week signed a bill into law that forces the sale of TikTok by its Chinese owner or bans it entirely. Biden is reportedly considering tripling tariffs on certain Chinese metal exports to the United States, as well as other sets of sanctions and export controls. Now, for China's part, they've said that the U.S. government assertions are uh, unfounded and that the U.S. is focused on suppressing China's economy. So while diplomacy is alive and well, so too is strategic competition between the two countries. Sam, moving now to Africa, defense officials have confirmed that the U.S. will move forces away from the African nations of Chad and Niger, where there was a coup last year. Why are our forces there and what effect will that have uh, on national security? Well, foreign terrorist organizations like al-Qaeda and ISIS have created global networks of regional affiliates, including in places like Africa. Those regional affiliates uh, could pose a risk to U.S. interests, and that's why the United States has historically had personnel on the ground in countries like Niger and Chad. We've had about 1,000 U.S. military personnel in Niger and about 100 in Chad really focused on conducting counterterrorism operations and helping to train local forces in counterterrorism matters as well. Now, following a coup in Niger and a military uh, junta coming into power, officials have suspended the security agreement that governs the ability of U.S. forces to operate in Niger. We understand that Chad may soon follow suit. Because of that, the U.S. is drawing down its forces in Niger and Chad. And at the same time, Russia is increasing its footprint in that part of the world. The U.S. administration is reportedly looking at where it could relocate U.S. counterterrorism personnel in Niger and Chad to other bases potentially in Africa. But we, what we do know is that U.S. counterterrorism operations will be impacted and that Russia is gaining influence in Africa, potentially at the U.S.'s expense. Now, we have to talk about Gaza. What's the status right now of both the humanitarian crisis and the hostage crisis? Well, Hamas this week released a really unprecedented video of a dual, reportedly of a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen reading what really appears to be a statement crafted by Hamas. In the days after that video was provided to the White House, the United States, along with 17 other countries, issued a public statement calling for the immediate release of the remaining 133 hostages who have been in custody, in Hamas's custody, for over 200 days. Unfortunately, hostage negotiations do appear to be stalled between Hamas, Israel, and Qatar and the United States, who have been involved in trying to broker an agreement. An Egyptian delegation went to Israel on Friday to try to jumpstart progress, and we're all hoping to see a resolution to this uh, hostage crisis very soon. We also heard this week uh, the Pentagon indicated that they are continuing construction on a maritime pier to help get desperately aided, needed aid into Gaza. UNICEF has estimated that one in three children under the age of two in Gaza are acutely malnourished. So construction on that maritime pier is critical. And everybody is hoping to see a resolution to uh, the hostage uh, situation as well as the humanitarian situation in Gaza as soon as possible. Michael.
All right, Sam Vinaigrette, thanks. Thanks.